the good news is you can start improving the health of your gut today by making small changes to your diet and lifestyle. One small step today, followed by one small step tomorrow. Small yet meaningful changes that will lead to profound benefits in overall metabolic health as well as your ability to better manage your weight. So what might some of these small changes look like? Well, you could start by moving more and sitting less. And again, we're talking about small changes that lead to meaningful benefits. If you're not currently engaged in any physical activity, start by taking a five minute break every hour. Just walk around your office. Physical activity improves the health of the gut microbiome by increasing diversity and composition of healthy gut bacteria. And I'm pretty sure that I've heard physical activity may benefit body weight regulation as well. How about your diet? Well, fermented foods and beverages can have enhanced nutritional and functional properties due to metabolites of lactic acid bacteria that favorably impact the intestinal environment. These fermented foods may be yogurt, miso, kimchi, kombucha, but they add variable levels of healthy bacteria to your diet and also to your gut. Another small change could be reducing added sugars, and you're getting a lot of added sugars from beverages. Sugars feed bad bacteria in our guts, altering the composition of gut microbiota. Studies also suggest that sugars may prevent certain good bacteria, including some probiotic strains, from colonizing the gut. And colonization is an absolute requirement for deriving health benefits from probiotics. Another small change with potentially huge impact would be to add just one serving of fruit and one serving of a vegetable to your diet each day. And plant foods contribute to a healthier gut and healthier body weight in a number of ways. They provide both soluble and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber retain water as they proceed along the gastrointestinal tract. In doing so, soluble fibers swell and stretch the stomach, which sends signals to the areas of our brain involved in regulating food intake. So when the stomach stretches as a result of soluble fibers, our brain tells us we are full and we can stop eating. A bit further along the gastrointestinal tract, soluble fibers help to contain nutrients, so they're absorbed more slowly over a longer period of time. This is particularly important for preventing spikes in blood glucose following carbohydrate intake. Blood glucose levels are especially relevant to metabolic control and body weight regulation. Once in circulation, glucose is taken up by various cells of the body. Glucose can be used by cells as a readily available source of immediate fuel or diverted to other tissues for storage as body fat. Persistently elevated blood glucose levels lead to increased fat storage as well as metabolic complications like insulin resistance, a leading risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Well, insoluble fibers can help relieve constipation simply by acting as bulking agents. Insoluble fibers make your feces bigger, heavier, and that causes muscles in your lower gut to naturally move feces out of the body no straining required. Drinking more water will also help this along even more. Um, also gravity, gravity helps. So as part of move more, sit less, small changes, other things move, your gut will benefit. 
Prebiotics are indigestible plant fibers that are selectively fermented by good bacteria in the gut. While all prebiotics are plant fibers, not all plant fibers are prebiotics. It is the selective fermentation aspect that distinguishes an ordinary plant fiber from a prebiotic plant fiber. Prebiotics are oligosaccharides. Don't let the fancy term fool you though, because an oligosaccharide is simply a chain of glucose molecules hooked up to one another with chains of glucose molecules branching off. But importantly, humans lack the enzymes needed to break the bonds between those glucose molecules, thus the term indigestible. Care to guess what can break those bonds? Good bacteria in our gut. As prebiotic oligosaccharides are metabolized, our gut microbiota release metabolites such as short chain fatty acids that are important for gut health. Butyrate is a very specific short chain fatty acid with a hypothesized role critical to body weight regulation. Also missing from your diet due to inadequate fruit and vegetable intake, phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are responsible for the rich, vibrant array of colors characteristic of individual fruits and vegetables. Long before you or I first heard the term phytonutrients, a man by the name of Carl Renborg, does that sound familiar? Associated plants and plant compounds with health. In the years since, fruit and vegetable intake has been associated with various health benefits, presumably mediated by the phytonutrients each contain. But here's the thing about phytonutrients. They're these big, clunky, unstable compounds that are very poorly absorbed by the body. Evolving research is focused on compounds derived from phytonutrients, smaller, easier to absorb, as the real drivers of the health and wellness benefits. We call the process by which smaller compounds are generated from large native phytonutrients biotransformation. Care to guess how this process occurs in the body? Well, good gut microbiota are responsible for these transformations. This is a very new and evolving area of science and one that we are keen to develop. So for today though, it's all about small steps. There are no meal plans, no recipe booklets, no physical activity diaries. Just begin making small changes to drive a healthier gut.